Hey guys and welcome to another block spotlight. In this spotlight I will be covering energy cells and energy conduits from the Thermal Expansion 3 mod. Let's first have a look at the crafting recipes of these cells and these conduits. Now the first one here is a creative energy cell, which means it can only be obtained in creative mode or spawned into the game. This also means that it does not come with its own, its own crafting recipe. The next one is the leadstone energy cell. Now let's have a look at the crafting recipe of that one and you'll see you need a leadstone energy cell frame in the center here then below that a redstone conductance coil and finally you surround the leadstone energy cell frame with three copper ingots on the sides all right then let's have a look at the cell frame itself this is crafted using four pieces of gloss in the centers on the outer edges in the center we have a block of redstone and in the corners we have some lead ingots. Then the redstone conductance coil is crafted using an electrum ingot and two pieces of redstone at the ends. Alright, next we have the hardened energy cell. This is essentially an upgrade of our leadstone energy cell. You can obtain this by either surrounding the leadstone energy cell with four invar ingots or you can use the crafting recipe for the leadstone energy cell as I've shown you previously and place invar ingots in the corners. Alright, next up is the redstone energy cell. Now the redstone energy cell requires a redstone energy cell frame in the center, then three electrum ingots above and on the sides of it, below it another redstone conductance coil and in the bottom corners we have two lead ingots. Now the redstone energy cell frame has to be obtained by uh, transposing a destabilized redstone in the fluid transposer into a redstone energy cell frame which is empty. Now this cell frame can be crafted using four electrum ingots in the corners, uh, four pieces of hardened gloss in the outer center uh, spots there, and finally a diamond in the center. All right. Then we have the final one, which is the resonant energy cell. And this one is crafted using your redstone energy cell and then surrounding it with endrium ingots. Now the endrium ingots are crafted by uh, using one piece of pyrethium dust and two pieces of endrium blend in an induction smelter. This will yield two endrium ingots. The pyrethium dust is created using sulfur, pulverized coal, redstone and blaze powder this gives you two pieces of that and the endrium blend is created using three pieces of pulverized tin and one piece of pulverized shiny metal combined with one bucket of resonant ender and of course before i forget the resonant ender is created in the magma crucible by uh, essentially uh, well <laughs> liquefying ender pearls all right Okay, next up are the energy conduits. Over here we have the leadstone energy conduit. Now the crafting recipe for this one requires a piece of glass in the center, surrounded by two lead ingots, and the rest of the recipe is composed of redstone. Then we have the hardened energy conduit, which is an upgrade of the leadstone one. This requires either one leadstone energy conduit, combined with one piece of redstone and three invar nuggets in the shapeless recipe, or three leadstone energy conduits with three pieces of redstone and one invar ingot in a shapeless recipe. All right, then finally we have the redstone energy conduit. This one is essentially created in the fluid transposer. First you have to make redstone energy conduits which are empty and then you have to transpose the destabilized redstone into it. Destabilized redstone of course is made in the magma crucible by liquefying redstone or redstone blocks. The red, uh, redstone energy conduit, which is empty here, can be created with one piece of hardened glass and two pieces of electrum ingots. As I've mentioned previously, there are four different uh, energy cells in Thermal Expansion 3. Now, the first one over here is the redstone energy cell. This one can store a total of 400,000 redstone flux. It has a maximum output of 80 redstone flux per tick and of course the same maximum input. Next over here we have the hardened energy cell which is essentially the same but this one has 2 million redstone flux for storage and can have an in or output of up to 400 redstone flux per tick. 
this is the upgrade version of the leadstone cell of course i also like to think of these as the early ones you can get in the game because well simply put they do not require you to transpose the uh, destabilized redstone into an energy cell frame then over here we have the redstone energy cell this one can store 10 million redstone flux and has a maximum input and output of 2000 redstone flux per tick finally there's also the resonant energy cell which is the upgraded version of the redstone energy cell and this one can store 50 uh, sorry 50 million redstone flux and has a maximum in and output of 10000 redstone flux per tick then over here finally we have the creative cell this one has an infinite capacity of 10,000 redstone flux, so it never runs out, it's never drained. And it has a maximum output of 10,000 redstone flux. Of course, there is no input as the cell has a maximum storage, which does never run out. All right. Now, next over here, we have the three, uh, three types of conduits. You might notice that there's only three of them not matching up with the four different energy cells. There is no resonant energy conduit. I'm not sure why it might be added in the future, but right now we have these three. So first up, we have the leadstone energy conduit. This one, let's uh, check it out here, can transfer redstone flux at a rate of 80 redstone flux per tick. All right, over here, we have the hardened conduit. This one can transfer redstone flux at a rate of 400 redstone flux per tick. And finally, we have the, well, the most powerful one, I suppose, which can transfer redstone flux at 10,000 uh, redstone flux per tick. So that's quite a bit. All right, so over here we have our leadstone energy cell currently charging from the creative one. And you'll see in a moment, there we go, that the front face of the cell is an indicator of how much energy is stored in there. So over here we have a very similar display in the, U uh, in the user interface of the energy cell. And we have a similar displays, uh, display on the front of the block. Now this does not mean that this cannot function as an in orb output face, but it does mean that if you have it faced outward without covering it up with a block, you have somewhat of an indication of how much energy is currently stored in the cell. You may be familiar with configuration in other blocks of the thermal expansion mod and essentially with the default configuration types you have the in and output and the input is usually uh, displayed with the blue color and the output is usually displayed with an orange color. Right now I've got uh, several in and output configurations set up here. This one, the bottom of the block is set up to output power the rest are currently set up to input. Now I'm currently inputting power through the left side of the block. If I set this to this one output, it will no longer receive power. Okay. Now I can also set it to this yellow color. This means essentially it's neither an in or output. So it will completely ignore anything connected on that side. Then of course we have also the front here. And this one can also be configured as an output. There we go. You might notice that on this side here, where I set it to ignore in or outputs, the uh, conduit is no longer connecting. So that's another indicator that you are essentially telling it, well, this is just an, an, any face we don't want to connect to. To remove energy cells or energy conduits, you will need a crescent hammer and right click them. Now, unlike the conduits, which do not store energy, the leadstone energy cells have the property that they will retain their current charge. So this one has a charge of 212,000 redstone flux and it's still in there after I've picked it up. Let's have a quick look at some properties of the conduits themselves. Now I've got one running here from the creative cell towards the hardened cell here, but it's running past the regular redstone cell. Now this one is of course charging because of it, because it's connecting over here. Now there is a way without setting the front here of the energy cell to not accepting any input to actually uh, remove this connection. I might have noticed that there's a bounding box around the actual connection here. And if I right click that with the crescent hammer, the connection will be removed. So currently it's not connected. And you will see that the energy cell here is no longer charging. 
Like all terminal expansion machines, the energy cells also come with redstone control. Now redstone control in the case of the energy cells will tell it whether or not it should output power. It does not control the input, keep that in mind. So we have the first state ignored, which means that it will output uh, even if there is a redstone or isn't a redstone signal being applied. Then we have the default low setting, which means it will only output power when no redstone signal is applied. And then we also have the high setting, which means it will only be activated and output power when a redstone signal is applied. I want to end this video with two notes. Now, first off, I have a uh, energy cell here, redstone one, which is charging uh, through this redstone energy conduit. Now it is currently outputting power into this leadstone energy conduit into the hardened energy cell here. Now, what I want to say about this is that the energy cell here is outputting at 2000 redstone flux per tick. The leadstone energy conduit, uh, on the other hand, can only transfer power at the rate of 80 redstone flux per tick. Now, what I want to note here essentially is that this conduit acts as sort of a bottleneck. So it will only be transferring 80 redstone flux per tick, but it will not explode or anything else because you're trying to input more. So it will just output at that rate. The second thing I'd like to add is that the different types of conduits simply do not connect up to each other. So that might be convenient to you, it might not be, but that's just something important for you to know. One final and interesting piece of information I'd like to add is how to actually change these values of in and output. Now it's fairly obvious that you can click the uh, decrease and the increase buttons here, but you can actually do this at a specific in a specific way. Now if you just click it with your left mouse button, it will decrease with 50 points. Okay. Now if you hold the shift key and left click, it will decrease with 1000. That's quite a bit more. Now, if you hold control and press decrease, it will decrease with five. Now you can also do it with your right mouse button. And if you just click it with the right mouse button, it will decrease with 10. If you uh, hold shift and right click, it will decrease with 100. Okay. And finally, if you hold control and right click, it will decrease with one. And of course, this is also valid in the other uh, direction. So if you press the increase button with the uh, mouse button and the keys, which I mentioned before, you'll get the same differences in values. Okay, well, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.